Let's now talk about two chemical reactions, the Suzuki reaction and the Hecht reaction, that are based on palladium-based organometallic chemistry. Let's first start off by talking about the Suzuki reaction. The Suzuki reaction is a palladium-catalyzed coupling reaction. Coupling meaning we're combining two R groups together to form a larger molecule. In this reaction, the halogen of a vanillic halide or aryl halide, right down here, here's my aryl halide, the halogen is replaced with a carbon-containing compound from an organoboron compound. So this halide is replaced with that R group to form this new molecule. I've coupled the two R groups together. I need three things for this chemical reaction. I first need either that vanillic or a real halide, number one. I need an organoboron compound, number two. So here's my organo, here's my boron comp part of my molecule here. And I need a palladium catalyst. That's number three. Here I have palladium with two ligand groups attached to it. Ligand groups, you might remember from general chemistry, are just groups that are attached to the central atom of an organometallic compound or attached to a metal. So this reaction, it starts off with my allyl or my aryl halide. It actually inserts into the palladium catalyst to form this organopalladium compound. So I'm looking here. Here is my R bonded to X. Now I have my R palladium X. So I've sort of inserted it between the R group and the X group. My ligand here is typically triphenylphosphine. And if you looked up the definition of a ligand, it is an ion or molecule, essentially a functional group, that binds to the central metal atom to form a coordination complex, a coordination chemistry. The bonding with the metal generally involves formal donation of one or more of the ligand's electrons, coming from the phosphorus here, to the metal. So the nature of this metal ligand bonding can either be covalent or ionic. So why only vanillic or aryl halides? So here is a vanillic halide. So if I react that with my Suzuki reagents, I replace the halide with an R group. Or in a real halide, I replace the halide with an R group. Because once I've done that insertion of palladium, if I have any beta hydrogens, they're actually susceptible to elimination, so I can remove two hydrogens here and get an alkene. If you notice here, I don't have any beta hydrogens in either of these that are sp3 hydrogens, which can be eliminated. So I need to have either a vanillic or an arylic halide for this chemical reaction to occur. Otherwise, I get this side product. My organoboron compound can be created by reacting a terminal alkene with a borane, for example, catechol borane, to form this alkyl organoboron compound. I can also react a terminal alkyne with a catechol borane to form this alkenyl boron compound. Notice I have a double bond now in my R group here, which will couple with the R group of an alkyl halide. If I want to prepare an aromatic organoboron compound or an aryl organoboron compound, I have to start with some different starting materials. I need to start with this lithium benzene molecule, react it with trimethyl borate to form my aryl organoborane compound, which then will react with either my 
allylic halide or my aryl halide to do a coupling reaction, the Suzuki reaction. Let's look at some examples of Suzuki reactions. Here I have an allylic halide. I react it with my alkyl organoboron compound in the presence of my palladium catalyst to actually couple those two compounds together, removing my halogen. So here's my new carbon-carbon bond. Notice it keeps the stereochemistry of my original system. Trans becomes trans. If I take an aryl halide, react it with an alkenyl organoboron compound, I'm going to create one new bond between this carbon and this carbon. So that's this new carbon. I've coupled those two together. Okay. And finally, if I look at th this aryl halide, I react it with an aryl organo compound together. I'm going to create a new bond between those two. The yellow area here gets coupled with this non-highlighted area here in the presence of my palladium catalyst. Let's now walk through the catalytic cycle or the reaction mechanism for the Suzuki reaction. We start off here with our palladium catalyst. And the first step is to do an oxidative addition of palladium into the halogen. In other words, we're going to insert that palladium between the R group and the bromine group to form this organopalladium species. The next step is we're going to have base react to actually replace the bromine that's attached to the palladium in what we call a metathesis reaction, where the base gives an intermediate 4. Next, we do a transmetallization process where the borate complex forms with my boron containing compound to actually form the reactive species now, which has got both R groups now, one from my alkyl halide, one from my boron compound attached to my palladium. Under reductive elimination, I actually restore my palladium catalyst one, and I couple together my two R groups there to form my final compound. Let's now look at the Hecht reaction, which has a lot of similarities to the Suzuki reaction. It uses the same catalyst. However, in this case, I'm going to use a vanillic or a aryl halide, and we're going to replace a vanillic hydrogen okay, instead of a halogen. So here is an alkene, where Z can either be a, another halogen or it can be a hydrogen, or it can be an R group. What I'm doing in this case is I'm actually coupling this whole group here to my R group to form one new carbon-carbon bond between my R group of my vanillic or aryl halide and my alkene carbon. Let's look at some chemical reactions of using the hect conditions. I take an aryl halide, I take an alkene in the presence of the palladium catalyst and in this amine here, I form one new bond between my carbon of my aromatic ring and the carbon of my alkene. Here in this case, I'm taking an allylic halide I'm going to react it with an alkene that has an electron withdrawing group here on the molecule, which actually enhances the reactivity. I'm going to create one new bond between carbon here and this carbon here to form this larger molecule here. Doing a reaction that couples groups together. 
If I want high yields for this chemical reaction, the alkene should be symmetrical, meaning I could attack this carbon and remove that hydrogen, or I could attack that hydrogen. So I often want to have it symmetrical so I, I have the same two products being formed. One of the sp2 carbons should be sterically hindered, meaning I have a large group there. Either my z is a large group, or I have two large z groups on there. And also, my z group should be electron withdrawing group. Why electron withdrawing? If I look at electron withdrawing groups, I can think of resonance here. I can move electrons over and move them to the oxygen. Or if I have a cyanide here, I can move electrons away, meaning one of the carbons now will be more positive, And I can get more selectivity between the two different carbons right here. Let's now walk through the catalytic cycle for the heck mechanism. We start off the same way we did for the Zuki. I start off with my catalyst. I do an oxidative addition to insert my palladium in between my R group and my bromine to form molecule number three. Then I react that with my alkene, which actually takes the place of one of those liquids, ligands to form this complex number five. And then I go through and actually insert that alkene into the palladium to form this molecule number six. This is followed by a rotation or a, to relieve torsional strain that sets up this molecule for doing actually a beta hydride elimination reaction where you can see my electrons move from the hydride to the palladium and I form a bond between my hydrogen and my palladium now and break that one bond between my carbon and my palladium, forming this new complex number eight. Then I have a second ligand transfer where I remove my ligand now and put my ligand back on my palladium catalyst to form my molecule here where I've coupled the two R groups together. Then one more reaction where I do a uh, reductive elimination of HBr to regenerate my catalyst. That's the HECT cycle.